Once you've got a pick and place machine running, the hardest part of any assembly job is setting up the project. This walkthrough of the entire setup will show you how I made the whole process easy and worthwhile, even for small batches and simple boards. Hi, I'm Pat Deegan, President of Psychogenic Technologies, and after assembling a lot of PCBs using OpenPNP, I've optimized the setup process in a number of ways. Here I'll show how, using a set of open source OpenPNP scripts, you can skip most of the drudgery of being a click drone and get assembly going in no time. We'll walk through the whole thing from A to Z, but to summarize, the process involves creating the boards and importing placements, disabling or enabling bottom vision, setting part heights and associating nozzle tips. The star of the show only makes a brief appearance, but the auto feed setup script will intelligently configure all the feeders for the project, which is pretty cool. And from there, all that's left is to physically place components and validate feeder heights, and you're ready to go. So now we'll get down to the business of doing some actual setup. If, after watching this, you have ideas and techniques to streamline the process even further, I'd love to hear about them. Let's go. Okay, so we've got this little project here to assemble, and uh, we're going to go through the steps I take to actually set up OpenPNP. So the first thing we need is the position file. And that's pretty easy. I'm using KiCad here, and all it is is fabrication outputs position file, the usual stuff. So that's great. We're also going to need the bomb. So uh, somebody set us up. Here's the bomb. I like to use this exporter here, and I'm just going to generate that. Uh, it has actually a little bit more information than we need, but whatever, that's going to be fine. So now to open PNP. I've got a bare system here. Uh, it's basically pretty naked. I have a couple of parts in here, uh, but not too many. Just some stuff I didn't want to lose. And the same thing for the package. Hardly anything, though. The one thing I do have set up is obviously the basic machine stuff, the, the cameras and the nozzle tips and, and things like that. I've got these nozzle tips here, and I've got a set of feeds. The important thing for, for my system is that the feeds be kind of set up on the workspace in, in some sane manner and have some decent naming. So here you can see that I've got a basically 12 millimeter top, eight millimeter left. They basically say what they are. This is like the eight mil and where they kind of sit on the workspace. So you can see I've got uh, this 16 millimeter times three, that's this guy. They all have fiducial home as the uh, part, which is kind of my code to say not being used and anyways, they're disabled. So, okay, now that we have our basic set of files and our system, we're gonna create a new job. So to do that, we're basically gonna do the usual thing, create a new board. So I've created the new board and now uh, it's time to bring in the uh, positions, the, the parts actually. So I'm going to import the board. Uh, OpenPNP has a bunch of ways of doing this. It's great. Uh, you have many formats uh, supported. Now the important thing here is to create the missing parts and not use only value as part ID, at least for the, my system. So I'm going to import this. Vroom. So now they've all come in and of course everything is missing and everything is very unhappy. Great. Now, what this did was create a bunch of parts to match and a bunch of packages for those parts. So there's a lot of stuff to set up uh, in all this. So if you look at it set here, there's no nozzle tip. Uh, the parts, if you sort them by height, all the new stuff, didn't know what it was. So it's 0 0.000, no height set. And that's actually kind of an advantage because I don't want to uh, use bottom vision on most of this stuff. So what I'm going to do is use a script here to disable the bottom vision. And I've allowed for a few different ways of doing this, but by height is great because they're all set to zero. We're going to set, okay, anything that has a height of zero, I want to disable bottom vision. So froop, there we go. Now, if we go to uh, some part here, let's see. When we had that UFL thing. So now the bottom vision is disabled and I can enable it for whatever is useful, but at least I don't have to go through and find each part and unclick that. So that was step one. Now step two is the parts are still uh, very unhappy because they're all zero, zero, zero. Uh, that height won't fly. So we're gonna to need to configure that. Now, instead of doing it manually and slowly, uh, here, we're gonna use another script. So here's part set height. All I have to do is click on this and then figure out, okay, well, give me all the parts that are 0402, and I want the height to be 0 0.4. There we go. So now that's that. What else do we have? We've got the 0603. Again, part set height, 0603, 0 0.5. Okay. So we've already got the heights, we've disabled bottom vision, and now there's another thing to do. 
uh, this thing has no nozzle tip associated. None of them do. And that's pretty annoying. So uh, instead of going through again manually and figuring out which ones uh, are disabled, then da da da, all I have to do is go to this script, package nozzle tips here. And what I'm going to do is look up which ones don't have any nozzle tips set. So, okay, we have 13 with no nozzle tips. Uh, basically, some 0402s and stuff, and the SOT 23s. Okay, so let's use nozzle tip 2 for everything that's SOT 23. Yes, true. Okay, now if we look at that, there we go. I already had nozzle tips set for these guys, so that's fine. Let's see what else has no nozzle tip set. Okay, we've got the LED, we've got this thing, we've got 0402s. Okay, so let's set uh, the 0402 stuff. Now this script is by default set up to not mess with anything that you've already configured, so it won't play with any of the uh, packages that already have a setting. So I'm going to use uh, NT1 for anything that's uh, 0402. Okay, and we can leave the rest uh, for manual configuration later. So what do we have? We've got our parts. We, they have decent heights, most of them. Uh, they have nozzle tips. The bottom vision has been disabled, and we did it in a couple of clicks thanks to these uh, scripts. Now that we have all the basics set up, it's time to configure the feeds for all these parts. And that's kind of the toughest part of this job. Thankfully, we have another script for this. The first thing is to take a look at that bomb that we exported from KiCad. So let's look at this. Um, that script uh, actually exports a couple of different variants. So it, it sets up one thing with each of the components individually and then a collated set. And the collated set is what we need. So I'm just going to delete all these rows here. Boom. Boom. And now we have the quantity, uh, the value, the, the footprint, and all the stuff that we actually need. So I'm just going to save this. And with that bomb in hand, we can actually go and use the script. So project auto feed setup. Now we select the bomb. It was called uh, repeater. Uh, number of boards per batch. Uh, I'm actually only going to do two at a time because keep it simple. Now it actually managed to figure out where to put all this stuff and it's mapped the feeds. So it's asking, do we do it? Let's say yes. All right, 24 feeds enabled. Oh, look at that. So something has happened. Our feeds here have been enabled and we've got some changes here. Now it doesn't know about the fiducial, so we're just going to set those. Fiducial, fiducial. Great. We still have some missing, but let's take a look at what this actually looks like. So I'm going to save that project. Now, how do we uh, visualize what's going on? We go to yet another script. So let's generate map. Okay. Yes, call it aaa.svg, and there we go. So now we have something that we can look at that is basically a reflection of what our table will be. Oh, wow. Okay, so what the script did is figure out uh, which package fits into which of these uh, feeds, and then it kind of configured everything uh, with some sense, trying to put uh, popular parts closer and uh, trying to get everything similar together. So as you can see on the left here, there are a bunch of uh, 0402s, uh, so LEDs and stuff, and or, or resistors. And on this side, what do we have? Mostly 0603, and up here, there's the 16 millimeter uh, guy with these uh, MCUs, and there's the crystal, apparently is a 12 millimeter, so that'll be in one of the other feeds. So that's pretty cool. Okay, now our project is basically almost configured. A couple of things are still missing. Uh, it doesn't know about this or that, or you know, it's some one height we didn't set here, so we're gonna have to do that manually. But most of the work is already done, so that's pretty sweet. Now there's a final part of this. Uh, all the parts are enabled by default, of course, uh, but I don't actually use all these parts. If you look at the KeyCAD project here, um, I use a consistent manner of describing what I'm not going to populate, so I just put a DNP here. I have a system where I can basically list what has been marked as DNP in a given project. So KiCad produces this XML file and I just parse it for whatever text I want and spit it out. So now I got this little list of R1, R3, R8, and I could come in here and uh, disable these manually like that, but that's a pain. So here we go, uh, job, placements enable, and if I just use this list here, flip, okay there we go so cool 
all the disabled ones are now disabled so that's nice and all we have to do now is basically twiddle those uh, missing tiny bits and actually place the feet so I'm going to show you how I do that now it's time to set up the actual physical feet. What I could do, and I have done, is use the map here. But uh, the thing is, it means rummaging through these things uh, twice. So these packages come uh, unsorted, of course, and it's kind of a mess, and I don't want to touch them too often. So instead, what I do is this. On each of these packages, I end up having a little uh, note of what they are. So I put C6, C12 for this one, stuff like that. So I go to Open PNP and take my job, and I say, okay, this is C6. C6, what's that? Here I go here, click that little feed button, boom, okay, it's on the right side three. So I have this little setup with a board here and I basically mark this as right so it has a direction. I know it's gonna go this way. So I just stick it on this board like this and then position it into the right spot. So I'm gonna take this set of components, put it in there, mark it, and then move on to the next one and the next one. And the thing is, uh, it has a double advantage because if I actually end up with a part in my hands that isn't configured, I know something went wrong. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, after going through each little baggie, I'm left with all of two and two wonderful, or actually four wonderful little sets of feeds like this all ready to be placed. So now it's time to get to the final phase and set everything up in the actual machine. Okay, so the first thing to do is to make sure uh, everything is kind of semi-sane. So uh, since I use the same setup uh, often, the feeds are pretty much okay. I had to uh, kind of set this one up because it wasn't in the right spot, uh, but otherwise they're, they're pretty good right now. So the first thing to do before we unravel these tapes and everything is actually to set the heights. So I'm gonna go to a typical spot here and just try and set uh, something decent for the height. So I'm gonna put the bright nozzle tip is on there and I'm gonna move the nozzle to that spot. And then I'm gonna go, okay, script. Uh, I'm going to go Z absolute. I know it's about minus 34. So I'm gonna say minus 33.5. And when I look at this thing, yeah, it's floating above. So I'm going to go down, one, two, three, four, let's say, yeah. Okay, so that's about right, like that. And so now I'm at minus 34.5, okay? So the way I wanna set all these basically to that same height, just to get a, a good feel, a, a good starting point. So what I'm going to do is right now it's minus 34. I'm going to go scripts config uh, feeders level. And by typing in a subset of this name, substring, so at mm left will match all of these guys. I'm going to say minus 34.5. Boom, I set it. Okay, and now if I look, minus 34.5. So that's a great starting point. Uh, one of these feeds down here has this, this black tape this guy here, he's not gonna to be too happy. If I go down to here to minus 34.5, it's probably not gonna work out so well because the black tapes are usually a little bit lower in these feeders. So let's try it out. Go, set absolute, minus 34.5. Yeah, it's almost okay. But the point is just to get a, a basic kind of setup. So I'm going to do this for the right side as well. So the next step is actually just to uh, kind of set up the rough position for these guys. I'm going to configure it for real once these are unwrapped because they jiggle a little bit. But uh, the first thing to do is just to kind of give it a rough auto setup. It doesn't really matter. So that was easy. I'm going to do it for each one now. Now that everything's basically set up, we want to check the heights uh, with more precision because we don't want to mash down on the components, but we do want them to pick up. So this script actually lets you go through and check each one. So I'm going to do this. What it does is it figures out where it should go, comes down pretty quick, then slowly hits it. And so, so what I do is take a look and see that's too high. So I'm going to go down just a little bit, down, 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 down. And that looks perfect. So now I want to set the height based on that. Boop, I do that. Do the next one. OK. 
Okay. Not height. Do it. So then we go through one at a time and basically just check each one. After plastic is removed on all the strips to expose the parts, auto setup is done on all the feeders to account for the final position. After remembering to set the PCB height and locating the fiducials, I do a run for a single board the first time around. Wonderful. Even with all the scripting, the process still takes some effort, but most of the mind-numbing stuff is handled for you. You start assembly jobs easily and get to move into bringing up your freshly minted PCBs a whole lot faster. There should be a link to the set of scripts used wherever you saw this video. And I've got a whole series on scripting if you want to roll your own. Also, if you have any pointers on making the process even smoother, I'd love to hear them. Thanks for watching. Cheers.